Well, the time has come, the walrus said, <laughs> when all good things come to an end. Somebody said that somewhere along the way. And Mr Speaker, may I say that on reflection, uh, 12 years has come around very, very quickly. It's been an experience of my life that I will never regret. I've met some wonderful people around the state of Western Australia, in other states of Australia and many from overseas. Can I say it's been a humbling experience. It's been character building and it's been my absolute privilege to be the member of the fantastic city of Bunbury. In one role or another, I've been in public life in Bunbury for 26 continuous years. And it's all been made possible by the continued support and the faith of the wonderful people of Bunbury have had in me. And I wish to publicly thank the people of Bunbury electorate for the honour that they've afforded me in allowing me to represent them. I will never forget their kindness, never forget their encouragement and support they've afforded to me and my family. To my dear wife Loretta, who, oh, here we go, Kim, <laughs> from, uh, from the day we were married, has always been by my side, attending functions, meetings, electioneering, taking complaints and suggestions, whether she liked it or not, and hopefully most suggestions were nice. Loretta supported me through thick and thin, and when I was not able to attend functions, she would represent me. Bunbury, I think, is very fortunate because I think they got two for the price of one. Loretta is, oh, is my best asset and vote winner, a true people's person, and I owe uh, her everything. My daughters, Lisa and Diana, who grew up with me, always been on the move and often away from home. And at times, you know, I've wondered what impact it would have on them, me being away so often. But they've totally supported me and Loretta in our roles, <coughs> and I want to thank them sincerely. I have a great son-in-law, Joe, and three beautiful grandchildren, Rose, Dominique and Alexia, who I look forward to being able to soon spend more time with. My parents, Antonio and Michalina, who supported me all the way. My father, I've got to say, is my greatest supplier of political wisdom. My mother, who cooked and cleaned, etc., all along the way for all the functions, and who, at the age of 87, still to this very day, cooks for the entire extended family get-together every week and keeps our family unit strong. It's sometimes... It's <laughs> It's something that I cannot describe or put into words the amount of appreciation I have for both of them. My sister Teresa and brother-in-law Jeff, my brother Frank and sister-in-law Debbie and their families, their support over 26 years have been enormous and I can't thank them enough. My parents, brother and sister and their families played an enormous part in my overall success, including babysitting for Larry and I when we had to go to functions, assisting with all the functions and fundraising, setting up booths, you name it. Family support has never been in question. Mr Speaker, I want to pay special tribute to my staff, Leanne Ma, Yasmin Pierce, Taryn Barrett. They are the face of me and my office. They are a huge part of my success, and my electoral success is due to my fantastic team. I've got to say, they shield me from pain, they bring me back to reality, they re-energise me, they get me back on track, They've put their heart and soul into their work. They know their community. They often work over, over weekends outside normal office hours. Bunbury, I think, has been very fortunate to have such caring people who have never been able to take no for an answer in their, in their quest to assist people. Mr Speaker, I've got to say, and I think with most of us, they've made me look good. And, uh, may, I, and may I say that they are the real champions of Bunbury. I want to make one special mention, and that is of Leanne Ma. We've worked together for 20 years. I owe Leanne big time and is a debt that I'll never be able to repay. Leanne has been my conscience and together with Loretta have been my rock and my salvation. And Loretta, Leanne and my daughter Diana are in the gallery here tonight along with some of my special friends. Mr Speaker, I want to say uh, thank you to the Premier of the State, the Honourable Colin Barnett, 
for giving me the privilege and the honour of being a minister. It's something that I always treasure and be thankful for. I've met some wonderful people, gained an enormous amount of experience and satisfaction in that role. To all of my parliamentary colleagues all here in this chamber and the staff of this parliament, thank you for your friendship <coughs> and support over the 12 years. The work you do for the betterment of Western Australia is something that I certainly value and appreciate. To my long life friend and former Chief of Staff, Gary Brennan, I offer my thanks and appreciation for his support and valued expertise and guidance over many years. He has also been my campaign manager and supported me in all my public life. And to the members of the campaign committee over the years, my heartfelt thanks and appreciation to your wonderful work and support. And to the Bunbury branch of the Liberal Party, and in particular, can I say, Finlay and Glenis Osborne, who are tireless workers, I also say thanks. And to the many dedicated members and supporters who have helped me over the election days during my 12 years, a really big thank you. While considering my parting comments, I revisited my inaugural speech back in 2005, as I suppose some of us do on occasions like this. I reflected on the great statesmen and women of Western Australia who had the respect of the parliament and the respect of the citizens while retaining their dignity and getting on with the job. It's about not mistaking civility for weakness. Perhaps I was somewhat naive in 2005, but I remain proud that I have held on to the values of respect. Many times I've talked about Choose Respect Initiative, which I introduced into Bunbury back in 2008. Cultural change is hard work. It's long term and it's difficult to measure any short term success. But I strongly believe a community as a whole has the responsibility to work towards building resilience in our young people, to teach respect, including self-respect from an early age, and for all of us to, con to be considerate to others. Without respect, no matter how many laws we make in this place, and no matter how many services we, as a government we put into place, they can, they can only be band-aids that will always need to be increased. It disturbs me that Parliament is often portrayed as rude or shows childlike tantrums, and I ask, what message is that that we are sending to our community as role models? In my inaugural speech, I also acknowledge the political differences that exist in this chamber, but I focused on the importance that we all have much in common, and that common goal was to achieve better outcomes for Western Australia. I spoke of my preference of getting things done through building partnerships and working with people to achieve great outcomes. There have certainly been times over the past 12 years that I've been frustrated with the process-driven issues. However, I've, believed, I've stayed true to my beliefs and on the whole, the great outcomes that I've been able to achieve for Bunbury and Western Australia have mostly been possible with teamwork. One example of the strong partnership saw the establishment of Treendale Gardens, a fantastic home and a respite centre for young people with degenerative neurological diseases or acquired brain injuries. Prior to Treendale Gardens, there were no facilities outside the metropolitan area and our young people were either in aged care or forced to be living away from their families. At the time, our efforts hit one brick wall after another, but we didn't give up. And after forming a partnership with MSWA, we were finally successful. Opening this home in 2012, that has now changed so many people's lives. It remains one of my... <sighs> proudest and most emotional moments. I want to thank CEO Marcus Stafford and, w and MSWA for coming along this incredible journey. There have been many great moments. Bunbury has seen huge improvements in our health care services in particular. In 2005, when I was first elected, our region had no adolescent mental health officers. 
Councillors were actually treating young people in their cars. Carers and consumer support groups were using my office for their meetings. While I accept this, there's much to be done, Bunbury now has some of the best facilities and clinicians for mental health, and our hospital has had huge upgrades, now delivering many specialised treatments previously only available in Perth. So much is often commented on about the big picture projects. However, by far the most challenging, and I think the most rewarding, is the individual that comes to you for help. I'm sure everyone in this room has experienced the stories of unimaginable hardships and courage that some of our constituents have revealed. Over the years, I've been humbled by the literally thousands of people who have entrusted me with their story. And I take great pride in the efforts that my office has made to give these individuals or families hope. To empower them or to simply break down walls that they've found impenetrable and to find a way forward. I believe this is the true privilege of the role that we all have, that we are in a position to make a life better. Our Bunbury community, I believe, is special. Although we are a rapidly growing city, we've never lost our country soul. We haven't developed that atmosphere that I so often see in other cities of heads down, always rushing, too afraid or too busy to engage. No matter where you go for a walk in Bunbury, it is most likely that someone will make eye contact with you, offer you a smile and say hello, whether you know them or not. We still know who our neighbours are. We still keep an eye out for each other. And while I'm proud, very proud, of all the great infrastructure improvements over the past decade that we've achieved, all the best buildings in the world will never replace that caring spirit that nurtures a community. So my biggest thank you of all is to the people of Bunbury. After 26 years of public commitment, Loretta and I will be taking a bit of time to travel to catch up with some of our overseas family. However, working for Bunbury and our community will always be part of our life, and I look forward to seeing the many projects that I've worked on so hard over the past decade come to fruition and continue to watch our beautiful city bloom. Can I take this opportunity to wish everybody in this chamber and to all of us there who are retiring. Uh, all the best for future endeavours. Um, you know, we are here and I think our main thing is to look after our people, to listen to our people, to help them solve their problems because, you know, as we all know, people that come through our offices, sometimes we are the last port of call. They rely on us to solve their issues where they sometimes get their life they dump it on your shoulders and say, please fix my life. And I think that is one of the great privileges we have. Thank you. Thank you.